Good morning, church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles and go to John chapter number nine. Another fascinating story in the life of Christ. All of John is filled with so much truth and, and so many illustrations of how Jesus spent his time upon the earth. And now we're going to see that Jesus is going to heal a blind man. But tied to the healing is one of those statements that we've already looked at. Jesus said in chapter number eight, I am the light of the world. When God said, let there be light, the word went forth. That's Jesus. And Jesus is the one that gives light to all men that come into the world. He's going to use that same terminology here in chapter number nine as he heals a man. Now, all of us know that in order for you to be able to see, there has to be light. I don't understand all the inner workings of the eye by any means, but somehow light goes in through our eyes and we're able then to focus and we're able to see things. And if there's no light, you, you're, you can't see. Here's a man that is born blind and he cannot see at all. And yet Jesus is going to give him light. So not only does Jesus say, I am the light of the world. He says, let me prove it. And he gives sight to a blind man. We'll see in subsequent uh, lessons that this is going to get him in trouble again because he heals a man. And uh, it, it's crazy for us. And, and it's really not funny, though. It's just somewhat comical to me that Jesus could go about doing these great wonders. A man who's been blind from birth and he's able to see and all they can do is criticize and say, nope, he's not from God. Yeah, it's just strange. But again, they could not see. So when we get to the end of chapter number nine, we're going to see that a blind man sees, but the Pharisees and the spiritual leaders of Israel are blind, though they think they could see. So that's where we're going. Chapter nine, verse one says, now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? Did, did this man sin or did his parents sin that he was born blind? Now, that was kind of the theology or the philosophy of that day is that birth defects were because somebody sinned. Uh, and it had to be either the man that himself sinned somehow in the womb. And they had all kinds of thoughts on that. Or it was his parents that sinned, and this was a visitation by God and judgment upon God, uh, upon the, the, the parents. And Jesus said, neither, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. God created him the way he created him so that God could be glorified through this man's blindness. Now that bothers a lot of people. But listen, God can make human beings for his own purpose and he makes them in his own way every human being has value and worth every human being and they have purpose and if they will allow God to fulfill that purpose God will be glorified in his creation unfortunately much of his creation rejects God's purpose wants nothing to do with God and therefore never ever glorify God and they stay in their sins, but even also, they never find the healing that God desires for them. Now, not all healing will be in this world, but I promise you, any person who was born blind or born lame or had some kind of a birth defect, if it's not taken care of in this world, they're saved, they're born again. When they get that new body, it will be taken care of. Now, that's a lesson for another day. But in his sovereignty, God created this man so he might be glorified through his healing. Verse 4 says, just speak, this is Jesus speaking, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am. Ego of me, again, the name of God. But here it's connected to, I am the light of the world. Those who receive the light will not walk in darkness, and they will be in the light throughout all of eternity. Those who reject the light, even though they may see in part in this world, one day they will be cast into outer darkness 
where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. They will live in darkness. Why? Because they reject the light of the world. Now notice the rest of this. It says, when he said these things, he spat on the ground and he made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Now we don't really know why he chose to do it that way. He could speak it. We know that. He could just, just speak. He could just reach up there and touch his eye if he wanted to do that. He could do it a multitude of ways. But our eyes and our bodies are made out of the dust of the earth, out of the ground. And so he somehow reaches down and he forms, I like to say it this way, he formulated uh, some eyeballs out of the dust of the earth. Does that bother us? If he can create Adam, the whole body of Adam out of the dust of the earth and Eve out of the sign of Adam, why should it bother us that he can reform eyes? And he makes whatever he does, he anoints the eyes, and then he tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and he washed and he came back seeing. So the man was, uh, was healed. Now the healing was also a part of the fact that he believed Jesus, he obeyed Jesus, he went to the pool and he washed. And because he did that, then that led to his healing. So it wasn't just the faith of just standing there and saying, I believe Lord. It was that he stepped out in faith Whoever led him by the hand took him there, blessed them. Uh, that's what our job is, is to lead the blind to Christ and uh, to find the healing they need. And so somebody led him, he was washed, and he came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who had previously seen this man, that he was blind, said, Is this not the one who sat and begged? Some said, Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> I know a fact this is the Others said, well, he looks like him, but I don't think that's him. And the man said, I am he. I am the one. Therefore, they said to him, how were your eyes open? He said, and answered, said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. Then they said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. So we see the story is setting up and the whole chapter is going to be about this, this man who is healed. And it's a wonderful story because it magnifies the power of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, the purpose of mankind to glorify God. And, and Jesus steps in and this man is miraculously healed. And yet while he's gone, Jesus mingles around the crowd and he had never seen Jesus. He hadn't seen him yet. Uh, he was blind when he left. And when he came back, Jesus said, there. And the people are saying, isn't this the guy that was blind? And some are saying, yeah, that's, I think that's him. Others are saying, I don't think so. And he said, oh, yeah, huh, I'm the man. Well, who healed you? Well, they told me his name was Jesus. Well, where's he at? I, I don't know. Well, come back the next time and see this journey. This blind man goes on a journey from seeing a man called Jesus to a man sent from God, to a prophet of God, to I believe he is the Messiah. He's going to go on a journey. And because of that, he can see. He's on a journey and he sees the next step, the next leg. He, he's moving towards Christ. And yet these folks who are so spiritual have their eyes, their physical eyes, and who believe they're going to make it into the kingdom. They cannot see these things and they're blind. Let's pray together. Father, your word is so wonderful. I thank you that you've put it together in such a way that, Father, at least it fascinates me and, and I find myself always finding something new and, and refreshing in it. it. It shows so many of our human frailties, but Father, it also shows how devoted you are to bringing humanity into the fold, and we're grateful for that. Help us today to go forth and to be like Jesus, looking for peoples whom we can pour ourselves into. In his holy name we pray. Amen.